What is going on, Dice Rollers? Paul here, and I'll be your DM for a little while. And today, I want to do a little walkthrough of Fizban's Treasury of Dragons. Uh, the thing about this book uh, is that it is too much awesomeness, really. It's, there's a lot of good stuff in here. So we're going to do a little walkthrough. I'm going to give you the best of each of the chapters, at least what I think is the best. And then uh, that'll be that. We'll go through there. But I do want to point out that we are one subscriber away from me going full in here and uh, and doing really kind of full shows, if you will, by me being totally present. So if you've not subscribed yet, go ahead and click that subscribe button and uh, and get in on the goodness here. Now, the thing about, uh, uh, you know, Wizards schedule, things like that, I'm slow. I mean, they put out so much stuff and I'm slow anyway. Uh, I like to take my time with things. So I, I for future videos, uh, I think I'm going to do a little world building. I've never done my own world but I think this book sets, a, sets me up perfectly to build my own world around this. So I hope that you'll join me for that journey. So let's go ahead and dive into the book, and uh, I'll give you the best of each chapter, and uh, we'll go from there. All right, here we go. Table of contents, packed with goodness there. And uh, there's the uh, elegy for the first world. If you didn't see my video where I do a voiceover of, uh, of the elegy, you can go and go right here. There'll be a link right up there, and you can check out the elegy if you'd like. And uh, this is Fizban, as you can see here, straight out of uh, Dragon Lance. And the, uh, by the way, I thought I saw Tracy Hickman on Nerd Immersion, and uh, he had no idea this book was even being produced. So that tells you that wizards can, you know, pretty much do what they want to do with all their IPs and all that stuff. So I just found it solely weird that, you know, you, you wouldn't send this book to like, you know, the person who kind of created Fizban, but that's just me. Uh, take a look. It goes through your chapters uh, right there. It gives you right here at the beginning, gives you all the different, the dragons of many worlds this is the multiverse of dragonhood here. So you have the Forgotten Realms, you have Greyhawk, uh, you have Eberron, you have Dragonlance. So as we get to character creation, uh, what stands out here in the Draconic Races, they give you the Chromatic Dragonborn uh, and the Gem Dragonborn. Now I'm going to do some character builds on this. Uh, coming up, I'm going to do it on D&D Beyond and do that live for you and kind of build out what I would like to build in these characters. Uh, both characters are, are just super neat. There's a lot to them. And uh, here's the Metallic Dragonborn. And uh, I, I love all three of them. There's, uh, I find nothing, uh, nothing not to like about them, really. Uh, and then it goes into the subclasses, which is the Monk of the Ascended Dragon, which I'll also do a build for you. Um, and, uh, then there's, uh, at, you know, you go through your levels there and then the, uh, Drake Warden, uh, Ranger, uh, which, uh, I just find, uh, fascinating. Uh, and, uh, I think there's a lot of good stuff in there as well. Uh, so, uh, another thing too, these tables, this book is so packed with tables and that's why I think it's so good for world building. Uh, there's so many tables to choose from, so many plot hooks, so many story, and I'm really committed to that, that story element. Uh, of D&D, &D. and uh, I just think this gives you, the book gives you a ton of choices there, so I think that's why it's also good for the world-building aspect that I'm going to jump into. All right, so let's go ahead and jump over to chapter two. Uh, there's great spells in here uh, from third level to seventh level, lots of great spells uh, to use here. Uh, also, the magic items uh, are really, really cool, and I gotta say, the giant canary, right here, buddy, I want me a giant canary. Uh, but lots of great spells, lots of uh, great uh, magic items uh, that you can put in the world there. And uh, I'm committed more and more to uh, the players that I play with is just throwing this magic stuff out there. I mean, what show don't you watch where, where you know, y low level uh, characters, if you will, and shows and those things come in contact with the, the you know, the majestic uh, magic item or the thing that's way, way above their heads and they have to figure it out or, uh, you know, somebody's after it. So I, I think putting it in their grips, uh, even at a low level, is part of the fun. So uh, let's go ahead and jump over to the third chapter. All right, Dragons in Play. So I love this book for a lot of reasons. One is that I think it's really good for new DMs because the way they break down the chapters, uh, that kind of tells you 
uh, you know, what's in there, you know, how to role play dragons, followers, dragon encounters, so forth. Uh, once again, lots of tables and it, 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 it uh, well, it's silly to say, but you know, it, it humanizes to us dragons. It, it says, look, the same things that motivates us motivates dragons. And they really put that out there between mannerisms, the bonds, uh, the flaws and secrets, all great plot hooks you can use in your game. All right, before we jump into chapter four, I just wanted to show you this picture here. Uh, that would definitely, uh, should, should give you some nightmare juice uh, there to, to use that. But uh, heading over to layers and hordes, and I love how they break down every piece of the dragon, right? The, from, from, you know, role-playing the dragon to the layers and the, not only where they, they live, the layer itself has a piece, is a part of the story, but the horde itself has a piece of the story. And that's where, what it's about. It's about giving, uh, uh, you know, as many story pieces as you can uh, to come off of. Because if you're going to invade uh, a dragon's lair, well, there could be consequences for that. And that's what they break down in here. Ter I like this, the terrain changes, that, that things happen. I think there's like six miles out and 12 miles out. Uh, you know, that, that these are the things that happen. There's terrain changes, weather changes, water changes, uh, changes to creatures. Uh, you know, that, that the magic that is so embedded into the lair or the horde has just, is just exponential. You know, it, it just moves throughout the land, if you will. And, uh, and I, it changes everything, uh, which makes it uh, precarious for your players to be able to go up there and kind of, um, uh, you know, makes it a little bit more difficult, which I like. It makes it a little bit more difficult to uh, to get uh, to the lair, get the horde, all that stuff, and makes it a little more uh, challenging. You're Just because you're going in to get that horde uh, of uh, goodies and gold doesn't mean it doesn't come with uh, without some, you know, um, risks. Like, it could be cursed, which I, I really like that aspect as well. You know, you don't get off, uh, of, of, you know, you don't get off scot-free. Then it breaks down what's in a horde, which I think is fantastic. It kind of builds off of, you know, what you find in the DMG. All right, now we come to chapter five, which is the Draconomicon, which really takes up a, a fine piece of this book. Uh, you know, it is a, it is a large chunk and it goes through every single dragon, and it talks about their layers and it talks about, uh, you know, all their connections and uh, all those things. So I won't go through all of this. Safe to say, though, uh, I do like the fact that they have layers for each of the kinds of dragons. So listen, if you need to just plug and play and say, hey, look, I need a map right there. All right, on to chapter six, which is the bestiary. And I, like I said, I will come back to that because I'm slow. Uh, and let's see, the Wizards of the Coast information comes out so fast. Uh, I've read through the book, and I've I've read through each of the dragons here, and it's just a lot of information. I, I will break that down into other videos, but this is a walkthrough. Uh, we come to the Beast area, and I want to let you know what I really like about the Beast area. I mean, there is just, wow. Once again, everything is story-driven, which I love. Uh, and it has uh, the characters that you really want to, you know, uh, put in your game, uh, and say, wow, what are they going to do? And that, once again, makes for good uh, world building. So let me go over here to some of the um, things that I really like. The Dracohydra, uh, which is really, really cool. And I love the Draconians because they're all very distinct. Uh, they're, they're, you know, they're not, um, you know, cookie cuttered out here. They all have their place. They all have their uh, different, um, uh, you know, particulars, if you will. Uh, Draconian foot soldier, an infiltrator, uh, a draconian mage. Uh, these make for great characters. Uh, the draconic shard is uh, basically the spirit of a dragon after you, a dragon has been slayed. It's not really gone. It attaches itself to uh, a weapon or a magic item or a gem, and uh, it gets to hang around and uh, either be a help or be a problem. Uh, dragon blood ooze. That is really good. I, I, I can see myself using that. But here, this this right here, this dragon bone golem, I mean, that is just insane looking. I, I mean, I got to find a model for that because it is just ugh, vicious, vicious. Make my players pee their pants. I really like dragonborn champions. Uh, I think that just gives a whole nother aspect, something else for your, you know, your, your players to get involved in. You know, what if they were recruited to be, 
a part of the Dragonborn of Behemoth or Sardier or Tiamat. And once again, all very distinct. And I just think that uh, I would like to have my players, you know, encounter them uh, in some way and maybe even be recruited. I think that'd be a lot of fun. This is uh, disgusting. Dragon Flesh Grafter. I mean, this is like a science experiment gone horribly wrong. Uh, and this, if you want to say it's, uh, if you want to say the Dragon Flesh Abomination was her is hardly right. It's the completion of that, basically, of that's what that looks like. But yes, I want these guarding the horde for sure. That's I want some of those uh, definitely guarding the horde. And I tell you, these dragon followers, dragon followers, I am fascinated by. And I, I would like to see these. I think these would be great uh, classes to play uh, and break down, you know, what they get and, and, you know, kind of figure it out by level. And, and maybe I'll do that in a future video of how to maybe make these, uh, playable, playable characters. All right. Then there's the eye Drake, which is, uh, beholders and dragons getting connected. I, I don't, that's, a, that's a whole nother level of scary there. Uh, then you have the gem stalker. I really, really uh, like that. And then, of course, ghost dragons. So, yes, because you should have ghost dragons. And then these, like, I'm thinking, you know, the mummy here. You have these horde scarabs. Uh, and, of course, the horde mimic. Uh, that's, yes. I, I definitely, yes. Yes to that. All right. Uh, that is my little walkthrough. I kind of showed you a little bit about uh, all the different chapters, what I like about the chapters. There's nothing I don't like about this book. It's just, it's a solid book. Uh, it's good, I think, like I said, for, for world building. I think it's good for new DMs. There'll be a link down below that if you have not purchased yours yet and you've said, hey, I've, I've looked at this and I think that's what I want to buy. I want to buy something like that. Uh, there'll be a link down below. I am an Amazon affiliate. So anything you buy, uh, so a few pennies come my way and support the channel. Uh, but uh, yes, Fizban Treasure of Dragons, it's a plus and I, I, it's on my shelf. And uh, you let me know in the comments, what do you think of the book, of, at least of what I've showed you? Maybe you own the book and you have some thoughts about it. Leave me some comments down below. All right. And that's it for this week. And I'm going to give you a little option here. Uh, roll for a subscription. That's right. Roll. So you've watched the video. If you've gotten this far, give yourself plus two. Uh, and it is going to be a difficulty level of uh, 12, let's say. So roll your 20. And if you get uh, 12 or above, go ahead and click that subscribe button and be a part of the community.